All right, so this is actually a, a video, a detailed video for a customer who was actually buying this jacket. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to take a video and a bunch of pictures uh, of it in a natural lighting and sh shaded areas and different lighting in general. And uh, also I wanted to apply a color effect um, and the effects that the show uses as best as I could um, to give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, the video is basically going to have uh, no effects, which is now. This is how the jacket looks naturally. No effects, nothing done to it. Uh, in direct sunlight. This is direct sunlight with the sun um, shining directly into it. And then it will also be um, with effects. So throughout this video, you'll see it with no effects and with effects. Generally in that order, you'll be able to tell. Um, towards the end, there will be pictures um, and um, of the actual jacket in question. And then at the very end, there will be just pictures of Supernatural screenshots um, the screenshots will be behind the scenes and screenshots so it'll give you an idea of what his jacket looks like naturally I'm um, assuming with no effects because it's behind the scenes and uh, what it what it looks like with the show's actual effects um, a couple thing to note a couple things to note on this uh, uh, video there's no way I can get this jacket a hundred percent I think the customer knows that uh, most of my customers understand that the reason is because I don't have the hero jacket in front of me. If I had the hero jacket directly in front of me and I could see every little thing that was, you know, done to it, I'm pretty sure I can get every little stain, mark, spot, whatever down. I'm pretty sure I can get it probably 90% to um, the hero jacket. But I don't. I don't have the hero jacket in front of me, so I don't. I have to go buy pictures and videos. And as you know, there's different effects and lightings, and it could be misleading. The other reason is these jackets come to me. They're obviously used, so there's previous owners to them. They come to me with sometimes with distressings, sometimes extremely dark, um, and not the right color at all. Which was actually the case of with this jacket. It was very dark and not the right color, and it took a lot of work. It took me about two and a half months to get it right um, but I'm extremely proud and happy with it um, there's nothing I can do so if it came to me with you know let's say there's distressing in an area where it shouldn't shouldn't be any distressing and it doesn't match Dean's then there's nothing I can do um, this, the problem with distressing is it's there once you distress it it's there um, and uh, there's nothing you can do to get rid of it unless you re-dye it and as we know that these jackets were drum dyed from Wilson's Leather there's no, you can't buy a dye and just do it at home. Um, so you're typically screwed in that case. Um, another thing is, for example, actually, uh, this jacket, the streaks at the end, of, at the at the end, uh, our left um, panel, uh, there was actually already streaks from the previous owner. So as I distressed it, the streaks became a little bit more pronounced, uh, a little bit more than I wanted, but... There's nothing we can do about that. And they're actually not too bad in person. Those those streaks right there. If you look at Dean's, they come kind of like zigzag, kind of straight and zigzag, but two towards the back. And this guy had them um, almost look, look like scratch marks, like as if his dog or something scratched it. Um, and they were straight down. And as I distressed it, they came out more. And they weren't exactly like that. They were slightly, you know, but they just came more pronounced. Nothing I can do about that. Um, this particular jacket, also the collar. The collar is uh, slightly, um, I guess, grainy, a little bit pebbly. Um, and again, I don't know what the deal is with that. It could be from Wilson's that the actual cowhide was like that, or it could be from the previous owner. But uh, there's very little I could do to fix it. It was a lot worse. It's a lot better now. Um, there's actually going to be a video of it right now. I think it's going to it's going to go up there. We'll see it. Um, Again, there's nothing I can do about that. Also, the jackets are extremely inconsistent from Wilson's Leather originally. I don't know what the deal is. That's the color I'm talking about. I don't know what the deal is. It could have been... Sometimes it seems like uh, they might have like dyed them. Some jackets were might have been dyed slightly longer than others, and that I guess that makes them darker. Um, or the sizes could be inconsistent, as we know before. Um, but this medium, typically, it fits like any other medium. Um... So there's just inconsistency, inconsistencies with the jackets. Uh, that's the reason why I can't get them 100%. Um, and uh, if you're expecting 100%, it's just, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was, um, so this jacket's up for sale. It has, a, it has, actually it has someone, that it, a potential buyer. And if he wants it, it's his. And um, I, 
there's a, I get a lot of comments um, and messages from people saying like, you know, sell it to me, please sell it to me. I'll give you X amount of dollars more. Um, I can't do that. I, I, I really think that's bad business. I don't want to do anything like that. And um, I'm just going to ignore those comments from now on. Uh, the way that it works is I have a wait list. I go down the wait list. So I'm not going to take extra money from it from people. Um, and again, the reason behind that is it's just not fair. There's people waiting in line. I'm not going to just bat, you know jump over people and, and screw them over like that. So I'm not going to be um, commenting back at all anymore or messaging you back if you if you if you try to buy the jacket on you know from un, under somebody um if you want to be on the wait list just in the subject matter just say put me on the wait list and then in the body please say what jacket uh size you specifically want and also you know the specific characteristics that you're looking for so for example if uh you know there's an imperfection in a jacket like if you really 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 want the collar to be perfect or you really want the the back to have um you know, a certain color or whatever. Um, that way I know. And of course, you know, if I find a jacket and you're, you're the next one on the wait list, you're going to get pictures. I won't just skip over you. I'll let you know, like, Hey, I noticed that, you know, the collar is real important to you. What do you think about this jacket? But it gives me an idea of what you're looking for. You know, um, another thing about this video is I just want to point out is the color effect that I did. It's specifically just for the jacket. I didn't really care about the background. So I just did the color effects of the, sh the show's color effect as best as I could because I don't know exactly what they did. I'm not really a video editor. But I, I did it just to the jacket. I didn't do it to the background because um, it just would take too long. So I didn't want to go through all that. Um, at the end of this uh, video, you'll see uh, how the show does it. In season one, they typically made the jacket very dark, made it look black and then you know they lightened it up as it went but they apply a weird color effect to it to, to make it look much more distressed than I guess what it really is and it, actually in person it's very distressed just like this jacket they're very very distressed but I guess the show wanted to it's because these jackets when you videotape and you picture them they're not um they're it's hard to get them to look like what they really look like in real life so I guess the show really wanted to exaggerate the distressing because in, in person they really are distressed but you know you want to exaggerate it because I guess if you just take it in natural lighting it kind of hides the distressing um so again that's what I did here um another thing I wanted to address real quickly is uh I'm not gonna I get a lot of questions of people saying hey could you please post videos of how to distress these jackets step by step I'm not gonna do that for uh, multiple reasons one I'll be out of business right I mean if I showed everyone how to do it uh, what's the point I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be um you know making any money off of these anymore two it's not easy to do it's not something that I could just show people how to do I would probably have to do a five part video um, to try to get, you know, try to explain it as best as I could, but it's not easy. It's like you have to be here in person to to understand how to do things because you need to know when to stop and when not to stop. And, you know, um, it's something I, I just can't do. And three, um, these jackets are expensive. I don't want to be held responsible for someone saying, hey, I tried to do your methods and I messed up and you ruined my jacket or something. I, I don't want to be responsible for that. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to respond to those questions. I'm sorry. Um, to give you an idea, when I first started getting into these jackets, I took it to a couple of experts, quote unquote, to get it distressed and none of them knew what they were doing. None of them knew how to do it. As a matter of fact, I had one person tell me that if you want me to get this jacket to look like, you know, Dean Winchester's jacket, um, you want me to spend two months on it, whatever, and try to get it perfectly. And he even told me that he's he thinks he can only get it probably 50 60 percent accurate that he would want a thousand dollars to distress it because he said it would be over 40 hours to just you know get it get it like that and I thought wow you know like and he's not even guaranteeing it um and they're idiots to be honest with you the majority of people that like okay for example they like to use three things and it's you shouldn't be, go anywhere near a jacket with these three things one they like to use sandpaper um, that is not good. Sandpaper messes up the grain and the fibers, and it looks completely obvious uh, when you when you use sandpaper, and it ruins the jacket. It, it, once you distress something, it's there. You can't get rid of it. Um, sandpaper is a big no-no. Two, they like to use alcohol, and what that does is it strips the dyes. Why would you want to strip the dyes? You're never going to get them back, and Wilson's 
um, the way that they dye these jackets is, you know, specific. And three, um, they typically like to, um, like when they distress something, they typically, it's like they don't care, you know, for accuracy. And none of them know how to do the stains. But they, it's like they just kind of just do it in a general area and call it done, you know. And, they, and it's just, uh, it's I don't know, you can't do that. I'll give you my techniques. Um, how to do them is a different story. It, I don't know how to explain that, but I do three things. I do use sandpaper sometimes, but it's very, very light, very fine sandpaper. And the only time I'll use it is if I want to give that worn, like, like, really heavy distressed area you know like it really got messed up but i so i do it so gently two dyes um i typically i'll do dyes um and the dyes are very expensive um they mimic the distressing and that's my that's really the majority of what i do it's all dyes um but i put them on in blotches i don't want them to sink into the jacket i, I do them very carefully and the dyes are typically for a small bottle it's around $40 um, there's two different dyes there's a brown one and a tan one to try to get you know that distress look they're very expensive um, for a jacket these jackets are huge it typically takes me two bottles of each around two bottles of each because they're not they're not that big two bottles of each sometimes three if it's really dark, like I think this jacket took me three, which can run me around 150 and up. Um, that's just the dyes, and then you have to you have to think about two and a half months of labor. That's my time, you know. So it's it's that's just you have to account for that. And that's I count I account for that for my price, and I think my price is very fair. Um, the next thing that I do is I subject these jackets to heat and cold, and that actually does a lot. The heat brings out the natural oils, makes it very shiny. The cold stiffens it up, dries it up. So when I take the heat out, I want to freeze that those dyes, those natural oils, to get them kind of dried up because I don't want them all there because then it gets too shiny. Um, so I'll subject the jacket to heat and cold. Um, and the problem is, is you have to know when to, when to stop and when to keep going because you can easily burn the jackets. Um, I'll also use water. What water does is stiffen it up also and shrinks it a little bit, but too much water will stain it and ruin the jacket. Um, that's basically it. That's really all I do. Um, I don't do any like running. I, I swear to God, there's people that like they'll run over the jacket with their car or throw it in the dirt or like rub it against concrete or something. I don't know what the hell you're doing, but it's not natural. Um, those are basically my techniques. Um, I think uh, I think I'm doing pretty well. I mean, the jackets are coming out pretty nice. Uh, what I really like to do is uh, I, I take these videos because I want the customers to know exactly what they're getting, and that way they can communicate with me. And if they they feel that certain areas need a little bit more distressing, then cool, you know. Um, I also like to point out the inconsistencies of these jackets or the errors from previous owners. Um, and they're not necessarily er errors. The owners just wore them and they got naturally distressed. But uh, like this jacket has a collar issue, which uh, to me, the collar is the most important thing. So I, I'm, I have a pet peeve with the collar. It has to be perfect. So it might not be to the, to the customer. Um, and the streaks. St streaks are slightly, you know, there might be a problem. See, when I'm working on these jackets, since I'm doing it myself, I see every little detail. I had a customer that was jokingly said, "Why do you tell people? It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I would have never never noticed it unless you told me." It's just I like to be honest. I, I'd rather tell you what I see than not to tell you. Um, and that's you know that's what I'd like to do. Um, so that's about it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, like always, comments or whatever, uh, I'll try to help you as best as I could. Actually, uh, the majority of the questions also that I get is uh, a lot of people will get jackets that are extremely dry. And they want to know how to bring out the shine or make them better or whatever. And I'm more than happy to answer questions like that. Like if you have things you need to fix, uh, they're typically not too hard. But to distress it, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to, like, how to go step by step. And, you know, 
even if I take a video, in the video, the jacket looks a certain way, but in, in person, it's another, you know, a, a totally different thing. And you need to know when to stop and when to keep going and when to apply more and when to take off and when to blot it. And like the, for example, the thing I love about this jacket that I did is the stains. The stains are perfect. They're proportional. Um, they're the perfect size and they slant at an angle that are, that's exceptionally well. It's just like the hero jacket. Um, I'm actually documenting the, the, the stains on this cause I, I want to be able to reproduce them over and over. The problem with the stains is you have one chance to put them on. Once you apply it, it's permanent. I mean, literally you have maybe three seconds to wipe it off or it's done. And the stains are, are they're not too expensive uh, to get the material. It's, I think it's like you know fifteen bucks a bottle or something like that. And typically, a bottle will last me for two, three jackets. But you know, how do I show you how to do that? I, I don't know how to do that. You know, like it, it's it's hard to sh to show someone else how to apply the stains. And once you do it, you're screwed. Like if you do it wrong, you're out of luck. Um, so just you know stuff like that. So um, again, that's about it for the person that's buying this jacket. If I, I hope it's you know I hope if you need more videos or you need me to do another photo shoot or whatever, uh, that's fine. You know, please ask and that's cool. And you, we've been in contact with each other through email and stuff, so we have no problems. We know each other. Um, to everybody else, sorry, I'm not gonna sell it. Um, you know, under somebody, it's just not gonna it's not gonna work that way. Um, again, if you want it, go ahead and put yourself on a list. I think there's three other people after the, after the, the, the guy that, um, wants it now. There's three other people on the wait list, but you also, I'm, I know for a fact that, uh, you know, it's Christmas and it was the holidays. A lot of people spent a lot of money and they might not be able to afford it. So I'm pretty sure, you know, at least one of those three people won't be able to afford it and would want to, you know, would want to hold off. And, and if, if that's the case, then, you know, you just you get put on the wait list and I just keep going down you know and then until it, I'll contact you and say hey you know three other people said they didn't want it and would you like it and that's typically how it works um if I can't find a buyer at all then I put it on eBay or you know if someone wants me to sell on eBay then I'll put it on eBay or they want to do PayPal or cash or whatever you know so that's just how it's going to work um other than that um yeah, good luck. See, I think the the hardest thing about these jackets is uh, for people to understand is the sizes are weird. Like the mediums by far are the most sought after size, and the reason behind that is because a medium jacket typically, if you don't know if it's going to fit you or not, a medium's perfect. It's either slightly too big, and or it might be slightly too small. And then you can go up or down the size. You know, you can wait, wear it for a while, enjoy it, and then get the next size. But a large will either be way too big and it looks ridiculous on you. Um, typically, it won't be too small. I think a large would be perfect for someone at 6'5", 6 6'6". 6 6. That's typically where I think it would be. As you saw in this video, the the, the model that was mod, mod, modeling it, excuse me, was 6'1", 175 pounds. I think Jensen's 6'1", 6'1 and a half, maybe 6'2", and about 185, 190. So as you saw in the video right here, it's slightly a little bit tad too big on him, but he's not exactly Jensen's dimensions, so um, something to consider. A small, even though they're rare, I noticed that with a small, if it's too small, you're screwed. Can't wear it. Can't enjoy it. You just spent all that money and it's going to sit in your closet. It's too tight on you. You can't move. I had a small M. Julian and it was just too tight. And M. Julians typically run big. So I don't know how that would work. You know, I mean, I've never had a small Wilson's. I've had someone, a friend of mine has a small Wilson's and he will he let me wear it. But I don't remember what it, what it was like. I, I do remember feeling uncomfortable in it. Like it was a little bit too tight. But I remember that M. Julian was really tight. I mean, I'm 5'11", but I weigh 200, 205 pounds. So... I don't know, you know, it's it, it just, if if you get a small and it doesn't fit, what do you do? So I think that's why the medium is the most popular. And then it hasn't been confirmed um, 100%, but uh, supposedly the hero jacket is a medium, and that's what the costume designer told me. But I don't know, you know, it, it could be a medium that was tailored to him or it was tailored by the previous owner. We don't know. So as far as we know, it is a medium, and that makes it, you know, much more expensive. So, again, these jackets, a medium is probably the most expensive that you'll get. Um, 
that's another thing. You know, I put up my money to buy the jacket for whoever it is. And the only time I'll go up in price is if I bought the jacket for really expensive. So the last medium that I got, I, I, I won it off a, a bid um, for 600, I think 650, 680, somewhere around there, with shipping. I think it was 680. And I had to charge the guy 1100 because after materials and everything, I need to make a profit. And he, he understood that. You know, I'm also taking, it's my money. I'm putting it up. It's a risk. Typically, people want me to buy it for them because they, I know where to find them and I typically know how to get them. Um, and that's fine, you know, like I'm okay with that. And that's why I have a set price. But in that case, you know, I need to go up a little bit to make some money. It's the cheapest I ever got one was four years ago, three years ago, and I found it at a Goodwill store, and I think I paid $90, um, but at that time, I wasn't distressing these jackets and selling them, so I think I kept it for myself, and then put it up on auction, and it was a large, and I think it went at in, at an auction at the time it's for $600, I've seen the mediums go up all the way up at an auction to seven fifty, eight hundred. so, you know, that's something to consider about these jackets. I'm, I keep rambling. I know I, I, that's it. We're done for, for right now. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.